Today, let's go over how we can create this Helix motion graphics style animation inside of Houdini and Redshift. So let's go ahead, drop in a geometry node here and let's name this to Helix. And like I said, we are going to be using Redshift. We're also going to need the side effects labs tool set. So if you have Redshift installed, that's good. If you don't have the side effects labs installed, just go ahead go down to this and check the side effects labs there. And you can update the tool set if need be in the shelf. So let's go ahead and drop in a spiral. And let's change some of these settings. So let's make it like four high, four units high. And let's bring this up a little bit and our radius on the bottom. Let's bring that up a little bit as well. Let's also up the helix count here something maybe something like that so from here we're going to need to get each individual um, spiral so for that we're going to use a for each connected piece so we're going to be using a for each loop to animate each individual one and we're also going to create a meta import node we'll need that here in a second but let's drop down a null for the time being and we'll name this controls or control. And let's go ahead at the parameter interface and let's go ahead and set these to invisible and drop in a float. Actually, we'll need three. So we'll do time as one and let's set the range for the time to negative one to one. And then we'll also need to animate the uh, time, like the time for it to animate off of the screen or the helix to disappear. So we'll do off time as well. Off time. And let's also set this one from negative one to one. And then let's set this third one to upper limit. And I'll explain that one here in a moment click apply and accept. So now we have all of our controls set up for what we need. So let's bring in the carve node, which is what we're gonna to use to animate these on and off the screen. So if I look at our for each here, you can see that with the carve node, now I can change where whether they're animating on or if I se select the second U, whether they're animating, sorry, animating on or off. So let's set that back to zero and we're going to set up this second U first. So first of all, let's drop over to the control node. Let's right click on the time and copy that parameter. And if you didn't know, let's go ahead and actually paste the relative reference in here. So before I talk about that, so let's take a look here. We can animate this on and off now using the slider, which is what we're looking for. Let's go back to this. If you didn't know, you can click in any one of these boxes that are black, press control E, and it will bring up a expression editor that you can type in and have a lot bigger of a screen real estate to work with. So for here, let's go ahead. We're gonna add a random number um, that we're gonna go based off of the iteration of each, um, each spiral. So. Let's access the detail attribute by typing detail and then parentheses and period period backslash for each metadata. That's how you access the metadata node. And then we'll do iteration to get the iteration number and then a default value of zero if it fails. And then we're going to randomize that. So let's do random. And that's gonna create a number from zero to one. So let's fit that. And like I said, it goes from zero to one. So we'll fit it from zero to one to zero. And then we're going to need the upper limit of our control node, which conveniently we can access by typing CH and then parentheses, throw our little backslash thing, control. And then let's do our upper limit. Why do we have two upper limits? Did I make too many things? Look back at our control node here. Ah, I screwed this up. Okay, 
So let's just go in here real quick, edit the parameter interface. That would be Y. Let's just copy and paste this. And we'll call this upper limit and upper limit. And this can go from zero to one and that's fine. So we'll apply and accept. And let's just make sure that we're all good there, which we are. And now we've set the top of our range to whatever we set for the upper limit. So let's click apply and accept here. And you can see as I animate the time here, uh, it looks like it's not working, but that's because we had the upper limit set to zero. So if, if I raise this up, you can see that they are being randomized on which one is coming on first and how they're animating on, which is what we're looking for. So let's set up the second one, which is animating off now. Let's just set the time to one for now. And we can just copy the same thing and paste it in to the first view. And let's pop this out. But for this, we want we don't want the time, we want the off time. And we can click apply and accept here. And now if I look at our off time, you can see that we are animating that as well, which is cool and exactly what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and animate these. So we'll set the times back to zero. And starting off, we'll just animate from, actually, uh, we would need to, let's see, set this lower than that. Yeah, so we need to set this from whatever the top limit would be, which would be, in this case, let's actually set this to like, I'm not sure, let's, let's lower it a little bit, maybe point, 0.06, that sounds like a good number. So we would need to change the time uh, to negative 0.06 because at the upper limit, so if one of these uh, spirals was set as the upper limit to 0 0.06, uh, we would have to go back 0 0.06 in time to uh, get it back to not being on the screen at all. So let's go ahead and animate that. So we'll go from maybe one to 120 and we'll set that to one. And then for the animating it off, let's go ahead and set this to negative 0.06 as well. And we'll animate that from frame 60 to maybe, um, let's go 180, I guess just to make it symmetrical here. And we'll set that to one, click that uh, control, sorry, not control, but alt click to set keyframes if you don't know how to do that. Let's also set the frame range and let's take a look at this. Click this little stopwatch thing to set it to real time. And now you can see that we have a nice little animation going on, animating the helix on and off our screen. So let's set up our, our camera now. So we are gonna be using Redshift, like I said. So let's do maybe something, something like this. Uh, actually, maybe zoom in a bit more. Let's go back. Yeah, that's looking good. So let's create our camera here. So control click on our camera to set the camera to where it is in our viewport and uh, lock it so I can move it over just a little bit. And I'm gonna unlock it now and it should be good. I'm gonna save here though, so that we don't lose any progress. Let's also create a light dome. So a redshift light dome. And then we need to do our last little bit here, which is we're going to create some wires out of these lines. So we'll go to a poly wire. We'll wire that up. And you can see we have some squares going on here. We don't exactly want any squares for our animation. We want some 
nice little curved lines. So let's maybe set it, the thickness down to something like that. Now we need to up the divisions and we'll set that to 10. That should give us enough. Mm, yeah, 10 or 12 should give us enough uh, resolution there that they look like circles. And from there, we need to create a material. Whoops, wire that back up. Wrong one. And we can set a material now, but we need to create that first. So let's click that pin icon and let's create a new tab. And now we can go up to the material context, go to RS builder and create a material builder. Let's call this like wires. And let's go back to our material here, set that as our material, go back to the wires and let's just set this color to something fun. Maybe we'll do a nice purple color. Yeah, something like that. So from there, we are pretty much all set up. We just need to create our Redshift render, uh, render stuff. So let's click this little Redshift button and that creates everything that we need. And I'm gonna save one more time here because we are gonna use the Redshift RT to render this, but it seems to be crashing stuff from time to time. So I'm gonna set the RT mode to the uh, render engine that we want and we'll do 64 render passes. All right, so I am back. Redshift did crash on me. I was using the wrong version. Has it been? I just updated Houdini and I forgot to change stuff over. So let's go ahead and try and click this render view option now and we'll see what happens. Camera not found. I think that was for my last testing. All right, so now we have some, uh, our wires going on here. Let's go ahead, let's pin this. Let's go to our object context. Let's create all of our tabs here so that we can go ahead and edit some of this stuff. So let's come to our light dome and let's go to, actually let's, uh, let's leave the light dome as is. And then let's create a geometry node. Let's go ahead and pause this for the moment. And let's just call this BG. And let's create a grid in the background and we'll, we'll rotate this, what, 90 degrees in the Z. Nope, that's the wrong one. That's right. All right, and let's just push this back um, a little bit here. So, cut this all backwards, there we go. So let's push it back and that should be good. Just give us a little bit of a background here. And let's go material. Let's come to our material context. Let's alt click and drag and create a background for us. And we'll come back in here and just set this to BG. And then let's go back to our material context and let's call this, or not call this, let's change the color of this to maybe a gray like that. And let's also up the roughness here. So if I bring our render view back up, there we go. We have our wires going on in here. So let's see, we can go to our color and this is the new RT. So we can just kind of change things around and get something that we would like. And you can have some super cool, super cool looking stuff here. Let's, uh, let's maybe not do that. Let's do maybe a color like that. And let's just try to bring that roughness back down. We'll get those nice reflections going on, I guess. And then from here, let's see, everything is animated, but as you scrub along, you're not gonna see anything updating other than colors and stuff. You have to click the refresh button and then it will refresh for you. But that is looking pretty good here. Uh, that is kind of the essentials of how we go about creating this sort of a animated wire helix type animation. So uh, super, super simple to set up, not too 
anything too complex. Uh, it does take a little bit of thinking around things to actually be able to animate the the carve node to get it uh, on with the control node here. But once you have that kind of figured out, it's uh, not too difficult to get stuff to animate with the uh, for each loops that we got here. Uh, and actually, I want to undo all that. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully this helped you out and you guys can go about creating your own little helix animations. Uh, but anyways, I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel about Houdini as well as some on uh, Redshift and Octane um, and then a little bit on Clarice and Cinema 40 as well. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you check those out. Uh, but anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.